For all the people that picked up the Dark Hand, there's probably a huge percentage that did so specifically for this. It's a grab attack called Life Drain, where you literally suck the life out of your opponent's soul. Properly scaled, it can do a pretty great amount of damage. The only problem is, it's famously hard to land. I'd say there's about five commonly known reasons why this is, and these flaws can be proven by contrasting with other player grab attacks in the game, such as the backstab or the sacred flame. However, I've made a discovery of two other reasons. One of these reasons I'm 99% confident that no one outside of FromSoft knew about until now. The second may have been observed by a few experienced players, especially knowledgeable with a backstab. We'll go over these five common reasons first. Number one, slow. It is comically slow. Makes sense for a powerful grab attack, however all the other issues stacking with this one make it especially bad. It takes twice the time to grab that it takes an ultra great sword light attack to hit. From the start of an attack to the start of the grab box, a player could do two straight sword swings and start a roll before they get grabbed. With some light weapons, you can on reaction get a hidden and get away. Again, this doesn't mean that slow attacks are unusable, but for a slow attack to be balanced, it needs something other than more damage. Something that makes it a risk and a challenge to try and punish, even after learning the game in and out. The topic is complex, and I already plan to talk about it in a future video, so we'll move on to the next flaw. Number two, no range. The attack barely takes you forward, and the grab barely reaches your arm forward. It sadly looks and feels so pathetic in comparison to, for example, the actual Dark Wraith's grab. Your opponent needs to be for some reason stuck or staying in super close range, and even then, you'll be throwing your arms up trying to process how the hell did it not land. Number 3. Small Grab Box So, even without debug tools, lots of players have likely observed how far from the actual weapon an opponent can be from an attack, and still get hit. This is simply because for most attacks, they designed the hitboxes to expand off the weapon in varying amounts that made hitting things a lot easier than they would be otherwise. The ordinary fist weapon attacks follow this design principle, but the grab attack, not so much. The Sacred Flame, on the other hand, takes a thing from backstabs. A capsule-shaped grab box is spawned instead of a spear around the fist, and this grab box is just a line so anyone right in front of the person trying to perform the grab would get caught. Number 4. Poor Tracking An attack being given appropriate tracking is a must. They can have various amounts of tracking per second at various parts of a single animation. Just a slight adjustment in how an attack's tracking works could seriously change its dynamics in combat. In the case of the Dark Hand, it has a bit of unlock tracking some time before the grab box, but it still deactivates early enough where I'd consider its tracking design a drawback. Players can easily strafe in reaction to the Dark Hand grab, going to the user's left or right, regardless of what hand it's on. Sacred Flame again outperforms it, by having unlock tracking up until the end of the grab. Number 5. Very short lasting hitbox. This one is very significant, yet hard to measure without debug tools. The grab box is only active for 2 frames in 30 FPS, and 4 in 60. Short lasting hitboxes on slow attacks make it significantly more difficult to catch people with them. Contrasting it with Sacred Flame, we can see that it has a much larger window. Sacred Flame is similarly slow and low range, yet it is used more often for those three advantages over Dark Hand. So what we learned here is that it's very easy to tell that this attack is stacked with basically every standard drawback an attack can have. But even when all that is accounted for, and the players and circumstances that should guarantee a grab, it seems for some reason... Dude! Why is it not grabbing, man? 
That sucks, honestly. Like, it's so hard to actually grab people with that damn thing. Good shit, eyes. So, why the hell did that not work? Could it be poise? Nope. It can grab through perseverance and hyper armor. Could it be some rolls on latency shenanigans? Nope. It can catch people even if they were in a roll at the time of the hit on their screen. Could it be blocking? Nope. It grabs straight through shields. This is often referred to as a failed grab attempt. One of the ways it fails is similar to how the backstab grabs and sacred flame grabs do. It uses what I call the victim side range check. Let's take you on a bit of a history lesson. In Dark Souls 1, PvP was dominated by instant backstabs, which simply required you to press a button while the enemy's back was near you on your screen. It doesn't matter for how long, or if they're 5 miles away on their screen, you'll get yoinked back right into the weapon. You could learn this meta and find ways to counter backstab attempts, however, this was clearly not what FromSoft intended. In Dark Souls 2, they tried to make it more balanced by having a backstab attempt animation that would play instead of a light attack when you were behind an enemy's back. This animation usually would be a jab with your weapon hilt, and if it hit, only then did it do the backstab animation. However, this still had the lag problem, where on a connection of higher latency, a player could seemingly pull you from afar into their backstab. In reality, you were just still close enough to be hit on their screen, so it registered the backstab. In Dark Souls 3, they further improved on this by adding another layer, a victim side range check. When a player, we'll call the backstab victim, is hit by the grab, instead of instantly performing the grab animation and telling the other game to do the same, it simply tells the victim's game that they hit them with the grab box. The grab box does not exist during the weapon poking or bashing, but instead it exists the moment you pull the weapon back. So if a player attempting a backstab has already fully pulled their weapon back and you haven't been grabbed, then they failed it. Although, Threshing Swords attempt to grab twice because of some glitch, we'll talk about it later. Once the grab hits and the information is sent, the victim's game then receives this information over the network, right at the same time the grabber on the victim screen appears to be hitting them even if that player already did actually hit the victim on their game a fraction of a second ago. The victim's game then simply checks, Hey, is the player character within a max range of the grabber character? And if they are within range, it performs the grab. It doesn't matter if they run around you, as it only checks actual distance and is not limited by the actual angle the grabber is facing. If that condition is met, and the grab victim does appear to be within a reasonable range, the victim's game plays the grab animation for both characters, then tells the grabber's game over the network that they should do the same. I personally commend FromSoft for this implementation. It honestly feels like the most fair and balanced way they've done backstabs thus far. I'm hoping they keep it the same or do something even better in Elden Ring. Both Dark Hand and Sacred Flame work like this as well, with the being in the back condition removed. If you get hit by Dark Hand or Sacred Flame on an opponent's screen, but then run out of range by the time you receive the hit, it will fail the grab. You can get this pretty consistently by backstep dodging away instead of rolling away, as backsteps do not have any iframes. When the Dark Hand fails, it simply does a regular hit, but when Sacred Flame fails, it doesn't do any damage with the grab hitbox itself. Instead, it has a quick, small hitbox at the end of the grab that does minor damage. So that's what's usually going on when someone takes a bit of damage and doesn't get grabbed. We'll go into this concept further in a video diving into the backstab. However, there's one last detail about this check that is just extremely strange. When it comes to the Dark Hand and the Sacred Flame, they can just stop working. Yeah, 
we tested it and randomly as the host, players would just stop being able to be grabbed by these two attacks. The funny thing is, the moment you attempted a backstab on a player, you would regain the ability to grab them again. No matter if you actually backstab them or not, you'd have to do this for each player you wanted to grab when it would break. I have no idea of something in particular you can do to make this break. I restarted the game completely vanilla with no cheat engine, no tools, no cosmetic mods to make sure that I didn't somehow cause this. And I didn't. It even happened to the other test subjects in their own worlds. What I think it is then is that there is some variable or some virtual object associated with a player in your game that needs to be there. I don't know if it's on the person grabbing's game or the person being grabbed's game, but if it's not set or right or defined, then the grab can't happen. Now, my theory of what's happening here is that there's something that sets this variable or creates a variable by default, but there's also something that unsets or removes it. And the only way to restore it that we know is to attempt a backstab as it does so. I think whatever it is gets set right when the game decides what to do with your attack request after your input. As I discovered when you try and force play the backstab attempt animation, it is unable to grab until you naturally attempt one. Let's go on to the final reason. Bootleg Network Stability Check. Now, this last reason, I'm gonna be frank with you guys. It is completely fucking bonkers. This one I actually personally discovered, and I don't exactly know why this check exists. It could have some other secret mechanic, but effectively all it does is make it less likely that someone can grab you across the map when their internet suddenly takes a dip. Basically, for a player's game to accept that they got grabbed, they need to see that the player grabbing them has a certain special effect on them at the point of the grab. I programmed it so players appear with the Moundmaker glow when they have this special effect. The effect is applied in the animation right before the hitbox, and the effect lasts like a third of a second. So no matter how high the latency, a player should receive that a player has the effect right before they receive the hit, and the grab should work. However, if the connection suddenly gets halted for a moment or some packets get late, the hit packet and the effect packet can be received too far from each other for the grab to work. So effectively this check is a bootleg network stability check. But I don't actually think that was the intention. There is likely some code condition that the effect requires to be fulfilled to let the grab go through. However, I haven't had any luck finding this. Well, that's really all the reasons why the grab sucks. Not so fast, Amir. Turns out you somehow missed the fact that no grab can work during most stun animations. That's why grabs failed in clips like this and this. Therefore, if you do mind only getting regular hits instead of grabs, I recommend you try to grab people out of stun by setting them up to be roll caught or attack out of stun at a bad time. All right, you can proceed. As for how you can find more success grabbing people with this, you'll really need to rely on your opponent using a certain weapon and being plain silly. If they're using an ultra tier weapon, I'd roll the first R1 and then hope they trade with your dark hand's poise on the second R1. If you are face to face with them, it should connect. If it misses, I recommend free aiming or switching the hand you use the dark hand on. Make sure you also have at least 34.08 poise so you can tank a single Great Hammer light attack. There are more situations where your opponent will just give you an opportunity to do this, but I can't really think of them at the moment. They kind of just happen. Maybe just try and use it only in these rare situations so your opponent doesn't really think about it till it's maybe too late. Now it's time to get into some bonus facts about the Dark Hand. First, apparently it uses a sound that's only loaded in Fair and Swamp and likely other areas with Dark Race. Listen closely to the Dark Wraith and then me performing the weapon art. And then see me doing the weapon art again at Firelink. See if you can pick out the difference. Second, the main hand grab will use slightly different sounds if it was cued from another main hand grab. 
Third, it consumes 18 FP per use, yet it works exactly the same with or without FP. Fourth, Dark Hand is a slow cancel weapon art, which is one of the main reasons options are pretty limited when it comes to doing cool combos with it. Lastly, I wanted to show you guys what I made as a prototype of how the Dark Hand could have been. What I did was increase the speed, increase the range, increase the tracking slightly, increase the grab box to 5 frames in 30 and 10 frames in 60, change the grab box dimensions to match the backstab box dimensions, and made it a fast cancel weapon art. We're never getting another patch for Dark Souls 3 based on the developer's pattern, but it's cool to imagine how a grab attack could be balanced to be more viable. This is far from the ideal balance and we would need more tuning, and for it to be the best, I'd probably wanted to have the actual Dark Race grab animation, as it just looks better than the one we've got. If I happen to get that done, maybe I'll do a little PvP session with a friend using this modded Dark Hand. And finally, if any of the developers are listening, we'd really like to see grab attack weapon arts like this fitting much better into the combat of Elden Ring. It doesn't need to be a true combo or a pseudo combo, it should just have a couple of perks rather than high damage. Thanks to those of you who have subscribed to me over on Patreon, and for those who want to become one yourself, be sure to message me the details of your character you want on this end screen.